So let me get to these bridge questions that uh, that came. So first one is, do you play losing trick count? So losing trick counts funny. I, I do think it's really important for you to look at your losers on your hand. And I'm very, very often counting my losers in my hand. And then, and then from that, I start to think of what my partner's range is and then whether with my partner's range of points, like if my partner shows me 10 to 12 points, I often look and see, well, can those 10 to 12 points fill in all of my holes? So I do in some sense think of losers, but I don't do losing trick counts. The actual, like the, the I, I'm not religious to it and I'll tell you why. Uh, it's a crutch. It'll help you in the beginning but it will prevent your development. That's what I think about losing trick count. It's something that's taught to people as a, it's kind of a shortcut that stops you from having to use judgment. So I really, I don't teach losing trick count. I don't think it's right to play, but I don't think it's a bad thing to know. I just don't think that you should base your whole bidding philosophy on losing trick count because it's, it's going to block you from learning proper judgment. So I'll put it that way. Um, Okay. So, uh, but in the meantime, it'll help you evaluate hands. It'll ev help you evaluate your distributional hands uh, better than, than what we're taught out of the book, out of the box. You know, like the, it's, it's, it'll def it's definitely an improvement on just high card points. Um, yeah, I do feel high card points are very similar that, 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 but, but we need something, some way of quantifying our strength for our partner. So we need some kind of high card points. Uh, I, I do open one of Trump with two doubletons. I, I look at my, I absolutely do in very, very commonly. In fact, I, I don't think two doubletons is in any way, uh, a, a reason not to open one of Trump. I, I do think that if I have a five card major and two doubletons, I'm less likely to open one no Trump. But otherwise, I'm pretty or or if I have some five, four, two, two, that's going to easily bid out. So if I open a club with five clubs and then rebid one spade, um, I don't worry about the quality of my doubletons. OK, so. This is when, when I'm deciding whether to open one no Trump with two doubletons. I'm looking to see how easily my hand will bid if I open my five card suit. In an ideal world, when you have five four, you're going to open your five card suit and then you're going to rebid your four card suit. But sometimes when you have shapes like this, where if you open a diamond and it goes pass and partner bids a spade and it goes pass, what what is your rebid? Right? What are you supposed to bid next? So before I open the bidding. I'm making that plan of what do I open? What is my rebid going to be? So if I have a if I have a hand with two doubletons like this, where my rebid is going to be very difficult it, uh, over one of partner's very likely responses. Like when I look at this south hand, I'm thinking my partner is going to respond to spade. On average, partner is going to be dealt more spades than anything else. And so I have to think about what my rebid is going to be. So I wouldn't let this rebid happen because I'm not strong enough to bid two hearts in this auction, right? Two hearts here. With my next call, that this would show more like 17 points, and I don't have that. So, 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 yeah. So, with this hand, I would just open one no Trump, and I would do it even if, let me make this worse. Even like this is a, in a more extreme version of it. So, you ask, like, what, what, how bad can your doubles be, your doubletons be? Here, I, I would open one no Trump because my alternative is if I open a diamond and my partner bids a spade, I have no rebid. So I'm just going to convey my 15 to 17 points and suffer the consequences. It, it, have have my opponents run five spades against me before but from opening one no Trump? Absolutely. This isn't bulletproof. But what you, what you what's really important for those of you who are worried about stoppers uh, and, and qualities of doubletons is you, you also need to be afraid of the other side of the coin. It's when you open a diamond, uh, I think a lot of you would open this hand, a diamond, pass, a spade, and then you would just rebid two diamonds. Okay, you have not done this hand justice. You have too many points, like you have a really good hand and partner's going to envision you could have like 11 points and you're going to miss some games this way. So I tend to open one no Trump when I have no rebid. But now just let's just change it around for a second here. Um, um, there. So this is a hand 
that I would tend to open a diamond. It's the same exact hand, but now I think my partner's most likely response is going to be one heart, and I'm going to get to bid a spade. So my hand bids out cleanly. That's how I'm deciding whether to open one no trump with two doubletons, is how nicely is, gonna, is my hand going to bid if I don't open one no trump. I don't like opening one no trump with two doubletons. But I really think it's critical that we show our 15 to 17 points. So if, if you don't have a rebid when you open your five card suit, it's better to open one no Trump. And like that hand, I had six clubs. Uh, that was the, earlier in this session. Uh, when, when, the thing is that when, when, let me just change this hand around a little and let me just make this a diamond. And I've only got 12 points now. So I need another little business jack here okay so a hand like this it's my style again depending on the vulnerability to open one no trump but for a different reason this is this i'm thinking more of a preemptive side of things where if i open one no trump it's going to make it much more difficult for my opponents to compete to two of a major and even though i have a really good six card diamond suit the problem is with these hands, when you don't have the majors, the opponents are going to have the majors. And so if you're not vulnerable and you have the opportunity to preempt them out of bidding the majors, maybe you'll win the contract in one note. Even if they take five spades and three hearts against one note, you're probably still going to get a good board in one note because you're going for 50 a trick and they're going to be making two of a major. So I'm either opening one to Trump because of rebid problems or because I want to preempt the opponents. Those are the two reasons that I would open a no Trump with two doubletons, but you just don't be stuck on the fear of going down. I'm I, 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 I would focus more on the fear of missing game. That's much more important to me. I'm much more afraid of missing game than I'm afraid of missing going down. Um, yeah, I would, I would open one no Trump with this 13 count. Um, uh, but yes, you can do it with 14. This is a 13 count that I would do it. I, I add points for my length. So if I have 14 and a five card suit, I would open one. No, or if I have 13 and a six card suit, sometimes I will open one. No, never with a major, uh, only with a minor. Um, the ACBL doesn't limit it. I I don't think. I think you're perfectly. It's perfectly legal to open a thirteen count with a six card minor and no trump. You don't have to do that. Anyway, I'm just talking about how I do. I'm not trying to like project it, make everybody in the world open with thirteen counts and six card minors. I'm just trying to talk you through the logic of what I what I think about when I decide whether to open one. No, don't go out of your comfort zone by any means. If anybody's listening to this and it's just like he's out of his mind, then don't listen to me. And it's totally cool. I will not be offended if you go back if you leave this and then just don't and just open your normal uh uh nor whatever you're comfortable with uh, but so, okay so um yeah there are there are certain rules that you have to follow you can't open one no with 10 cards and two suits that's just a pretty reasonable rule uh all right uh so the other question that was asked to me today was what do you play when the opponents open a minor and you uh, when when partner opens a minor and they overcall no trumps. Let me let me let me read reload a deal with the right hand as the dealer. Um, club one no trump. Okay, teachers table club one no trump. Okay, so uh, for starters, obviously I'm never gonna have this good of a hand. Um, so the, the first things first is when partner opens and they overcall a no trump, anytime you have 10 or more points, uh, you would just always start with a penalty double. Okay, no matter what system I'm agreeing to play with my partners, under any circumstances, when my partner opens the bidding and the opponents overcall a no trump, I'm going to make a penalty double with 10 points because my partner showed an opening bid. They overcalled a no trump showing 16 to 18 or for good 15 to 18. And I have 10. I know that the last person has absolutely nothing. So, so I will always double with 10 points. So if you start with that idea, understanding that doubles penalty and everybody should have this as, as a standard penalty double. There's a few very important standard penalty doubles. This is one of the most completely standard you everybody you sit down with this double is penalty they overcalled a no trump we double his penalty so if you're always going to double with 10 points that's where you start then your two level bids are going to be worse hands because you're going to double when you have the 10 point hand so whenever you bid at the two level so if you're playing completely standard 
the completely standard way to play over one no trump is natural everything. Two hearts natural, two spades natural. So if I had a hand like this, this would be a perfect hand to bid two hearts, to show hearts. Seems crazy because you only have four points, but you've got to remember your partner's got an opening bid. So you, you, you're you kind of covered. And this is just the kind of hand where you're probably not going to beat one no Trump and there's a good chance you're going to make two hearts or maybe go down very few. So you want to get in the habit of bidding on these types of hands over when they over, over call one no Trump. And um, yeah, and so over uh, other than that, but so what has been discovered is that this hand... Would also really like to bid. But when you only have a five card suit, it's pretty dangerous bidding to the two level with only a five card suit because what if partners got a singleton and they're not going to know the difference between whether you have five or six or seven. So over time, people realize that it's it's actually really, really, really useful to have a bid that shows both majors after one club, one no trump. So there's different pe different people do it different ways. Some people play something called same suit stamen. And what that would mean is that bidding partners minor would actually say to partner, I have both majors. Some people play something called Mitchell stamen, where when it goes a diamond and no trump, that you always bid two clubs to show both majors. Um, and what I play, that's something, this is something you just have to agree with your partners. What I play here is I play the same system over one no Trump. When my partner opens a minor and they overcall one no Trump, I play the same system that I play over a one no Trump opening, which is I play multi landy. So I play two club shows, both majors. Two diamonds says I have either hearts or spades. Two hearts says I have hearts in a minor. And two spades says I have spades in a minor. So that's what I would play with my partners. It's just something you kind of have to agree on. Um, so no, you're not giving you're not giving the opponents misinformation. When I'm op opening those unorthodox one knows, I'm still looking at them like 15 to 17 balanced. I'm not doing it to deceive the opponents by any means. I'm doing it because I believe my hand is worth the same number of tricks as a typical 15 to 17 point no trump. So um, it's not it's not deceptive and, and it's not something that the opponents can really be deceived by. It doesn't really like if your opponent's opening a no trump with a six card minor and 13 point, it, it's usually not going to matter. Like I, I don't win a lot of boards by opening one no trump with 13 and, and the opponent's thinking, oh, they've got a strong hand. I'm going to stay out and not get involved. That doesn't really happen real in, in, in practice. All that happens is my partner bids some number of no trumps and we make that number of tricks because my, my trick taking potential of my hand was exactly what I described of 15 to 17 points. It might have been that my I, my tricks are coming from my length instead of high cards, but uh, no, I don't alert them because my partner is expecting 15 to 17 points or, four, or a good 14 to 17. That's what I announced my one no trumps as a good 14 to 17. Uh, so which means I upgrade some hands. And that's something that you should just always assume is happening, that people are able to upgrade hands. We're taught bridge in a very rigid way where everything needs to be exactly in point range. But in reality, if you think about what we're doing in bidding and bridge is we are trying to convey the number of tricks our hand is worth to our partner. Right. And sometimes our tricks are coming from high cards and sometimes our tricks are coming from uh, our length. And just as a matter of fact, like w w that, like on that hand where you guys were all in agreement with me uh, that we needed to jump to three spades on that one hand where we had a singleton and we were adding support points. 
That's exactly what we were doing. We were reevaluating our hand for our trick taking potential. We said, well, we have a singleton. And so we're going to take a couple extra tricks than our high card suggests. And so we were upgrading our hand to be a three spade bid. But that, that's all we're doing is we're, we're trying to convey our hand to our partner. We're not trying to deceive our opponents. We're trying to convey our hands. So that's completely legal in, 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 in bridge to evaluate your hand. You're not, if you're doing it destructively, if you're psyching, that's a whole nother animal. But if you're doing it constructively, trying to get to the right contract, there's nothing wrong with it at all. And you don't need to pre-alert. The number of 13.1 no's that I've opened this year is like, I don't know, where are we? September, probably like five, you know, and, and, and most of them only happened when I was playing high level bridge. So it's not really even, and they're just used to it. Like in, in my, in, in my circles, 13.6 card suits, is just kind of a normal thing among expert players. So at the bridge club, I might not even do it because I'm not, I'm not looking to cause trouble anyway. Um, last thing uh, about, but is when my partner opens one of a major and they overcall one, no Trump, that's different. Now you don't need a way to show both majors and it's much more common that you're going to actually support your partner to two hearts uh, because partner's got five of them. So over one heart, one no, then, then, then you don't, I, I don't play any fancy systems. It's just when, when it goes one of a minor one, no, that I like to play multi landy, but at a minimum, I agree with, I agree to play Mitchell Stamen or same suit Stamen. And, and it's funny. I just, it's one of those things that it's, there's so many of these ridiculous little things that you have to talk about with your partner when you're playing. And, the, and, and that's just one of them. And if you forget and it comes up, you're like, ah, I wish I talked about this. And that happens all the time. And then you talk about it and you become a more established partnership. That's kind of how the game works. Uh, okay, I'm done sharing my screen. I, I, again, sorry, everybody, for the trouble. I'm glad we got to go over some bridge stuff. Uh, thanks. See you next time.